some glad and others mad. That's how it normally goes. Yes, sir. We thank God now for you that are watching and you listening around the world. We thank God for giving your mind on today to tune into the program. Amen. We are here to do as we often do, and that's to teach God's divine word. Briefly, by way of announcement, let me remind the saints, Lord willing, you that's in the Florence, South Carolina, and surrounding areas, you that's in Georgia, you that's in South Carolina, North Carolina, Virginia, we look to be with you all there in Florence. We look to be with you in Florence, April 3rd and April 4th. We'll be at the Hampton Inn and Suites Hotel, located at 1735 Stokes Road, <clears throat> right there in Florence, South Carolina. On that Saturday, April 3rd, again, we're going to have a Q&A from 2 to 4. Come on out and sit with us, and let's get into some good biblical dialogue. Even you that disagree with us, come on with the right spirit, and let's sit and get into the word of God. All right? On Saturday night, service will begin at 7 p.m. and Sunday morning service at 11 a.m. You that's in Mount Laurel, New Jersey and surrounding areas. We'll be there with you all in Mount Laurel, New Jersey on May 29th and May 30th. We'll be at the Double Tree Hotel located at 515 Fellowship Road, Mount Laurel, New Jersey. Again, New Jersey. On that Saturday, Q&A from 2 to 4. Even you that disagree with us, come on out and sit down and let's go into the Bible. Come with the right spirit. Ella Murray is not coming to debate with you, waste my time. We're coming to sit down and go into the word. You see, once I teach the word, I move on. I'm not going to stay there and fight with you 30 minutes because you don't like what the word says. I can stay there and fight with you for 30 days. When we get done, the word hadn't changed. It's going to remain the same. So being that I know you can't change it, I'm going to show you what it said. I'm going to let you read it. Then I'm going to move on. I'm going to let you go home and wrestle with it. I'm going to let you go home and get online and post that I'm a false prophet. I'm going to let you do that. Amen. While we go on to something else. Amen. All right. So we'll be there on that Saturday, two to four Q&A, Saturday night, service at 7 p.m. and Sunday morning service at 11 a.m. Govern yourselves accordingly. We have many more trips that we will be announcing. Chicago, Illinois. I want some of you saints in Chicago to call my office. Call my office. Leave your name. I need some of you to check into some places for me there. I don't know uh, much about Chicago for us. The areas are concerned. We want to get into a good, nice, safe place where people don't mind coming. But we want to come there and preach the gospel to Chicago. We're looking to try to get in there sometime at the end of this summer. So some of the saints from Chicago... I know y'all are faithful viewers. Give my office a call and y'all help us out for us. Location is concerned. All right. We look forward to that. Also, Michigan, stay tuned. Soon as things open up in Michigan where we can get in, we're coming. Dallas, Texas, stay tuned. Soon as things open up where we can get in there, we're coming. All right. So stay tuned for the announcements. All right, Brother Wright, let it roll if you would, brother. We thank God again for all of you that are here. We're going to take our time today and do some teaching. Bible said my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. This program here is designed to give you knowledge of what the word is saying. Y'all hear me well now. There's a lot going on in the religious world today, and I... There's something in me, and it ain't time yet, but it's something in me about doctrine. About doctrine. Now, just stay tuned. It's coming out. I feel it bubbling. But not today. I want to 
you know, take our time, one of these services, when the Lord sees see fit and say so, and deal with doctrine. Because doctrine is what sets the house in order. Amen. Do you hear me? Doctrine sets the house in order. We can come here and like many organizations do, they come together and they run around the church. Amen. Lay down on the floor and just wallow. They love drama. Excitement. They do a whole lot of stuff. But when all the dust settles, I want to know what you believe. Amen. After you're done with running around the church, after you're done casting out devils, as you say, after you're done claiming title of apostle, after you're done, my God, doing all this work you say you're doing, I want to know what you believe. I'm talking doctrine. People today are just caught up in excitement. We can't go there today. Not today. Because it's in me. The Lord dealt with me this morning in my office about this. Doctrine. People have got away from doctrine. And this younger generation is running after a bunch of junk. Yes, sir. Because you have no roots. Amen. You hadn't been taught doctrine. That's why you're running after this junk. many of the older seasoned saints that's been around a while, they're able to look through that junk. But this younger generation that's coming up, they just want a, a tongue and a jerk. Amen. Want to claim this gift and that gift. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. All right, when you get done doing all that, I want to know what you believe. We ain't going there today. I'm going to leave that alone, but it's in me. Stay tuned. I have an email here. I want to help the writer. He writes, greetings in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I am Brother Charles Morgan. I would like to say first, God bless you for preaching the truth of the gospel. In its original context and prophetic statements, it speaks. Now, I have a statement and a question. My statement is, there is not enough teaching on the purpose and job of the Holy Ghost in the church. Because of the lack of biblical and revelatory teaching, the capabilities of the supernatural powers of the Holy Ghost, the people stands idle in spiritual progress. Now, my question is about perfection in Christ. Why do people confess imperfection while confessing being filled with the Holy Ghost? When the Bible says in Matthew 5, 48, be ye therefore perfect, even as your father, which is in heaven, is perfect. Now, I know from personal studies and research that perfect means to be whole and entire. Finished and complete. In addition, Pastor, in present living of today, how can this verse be applied to us as the children of the Lord? God bless you, sir. And keep preaching the good news of Jesus Christ. Brother Morgan, you make a good statement and you ask a good question. Now we're going to see how much we can cover today. But it's a whole lot in that right there, brother. He asks concerning the purpose and job of the Holy Ghost. I want to talk about that first. I want to talk about the purpose and the job of the Holy Ghost. I want to talk about who is the Holy Ghost. How do you receive the Holy Ghost? How do you know you got it? How do you know whether or not them tongues you spoke in came from above? Amen. I want to talk about this today. I want to talk about the Holy Ghost. What is the Holy Ghost? 
Somebody said that's the third person in the Trinity. Well, that's what the Trinitarians believe. But there's only one problem. I can't read that. Amen. I cannot read where the Holy Ghost is the third person in the Trinity. You see, all you got to do is know what Holy Ghost means. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Hallelujah to God. Holy Ghost, my God, some, certain scriptures say Holy Ghost. Other scriptures say Holy Spirit. Amen. It's talking about the same. Amen. It's not the third person in the Trinity. There's no such thing as a Trinity. Hear me, Trinitarians. He said, Mary, 1 John 5 and 7, let you know it's a Trinity. You better give me that, twin. 1 John chapter 5 and at verse 7. Let's help the Trinitarians a little bit here. What did it say, twin? For there are three that bear record in heaven. Record. There's three that bear record in heaven. The who Father. It? The who? The Father. That's God the Father. Hallelujah to God. That's a record of God the Father. Yes, sir. The Bible said the Father. The Word. That's the Son of God. You got God the Father, you got the Word, which is the Son. How can you say the Son, Mary? The Word was made flesh. And John said it dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the Father. God the Father sent his only begotten Son into the world. The Bible said the Father, the, the Word, Word, and what else? And the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah to God. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the Holy Spirit. That's the way God get in us. I want you to hear what I just said. God get in us through and by the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's the Spirit of God that gets in mankind. Listen to me. Listen to Ella Murray. The Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit is not separate from God. The Holy Ghost and the Holy Spirit is not separate from God. Amen. I can say I got the Holy Spirit. I can say I got the Holy Ghost. I can say I got God. Amen. I can say I got Christ. Amen. I can say I got the Spirit of Truth. I can say I got the Spirit of Adoption. My God, I'm saying the same thing. Amen. I'm saying the same thing, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. I'm going to teach you today. The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. God simply called his Spirit the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. Give me Acts on 2. Start at verse 38. Let's teach the people here. Acts chapter 2. And start at verse number 38, twin. What did it say, son? Then Peter said unto them. What did Peter say? Repent and be baptized, every one Repent of you. Repent and be baptized, every one of you. In the name of Jesus Christ. What did he say, twin? For the remission of sins. For the removing of your sin. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Shall receive the gift of what? Of the Holy Ghost. Shall receive the gift of what? The gift of the Holy Ghost. You will receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Read it, twin. For the promise is promise. unto you. Promise. Remember that word, promise. The Bible said, here you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promise is unto you. Give me Ephesians, Son, 112. I want you to stay with me now. Ephesians, chapter 1 and that verse number 12. Remember Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promise is unto you and to your children. Ephesians 1.12 said what? That we should be to the praise of his glory. We should be the, to the praise of God's glory. Who first trusted in Christ. Who first trusted in Christ. In whom ye also trusted. Read it, twin. After that ye heard the word of truth. After you heard the word of truth. The gospel of your salvation. Read it, son. In whom also after ye believed. After you believe in this gospel of your salvation, what happened, twin? You were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. What spirit? 
That Holy Spirit of promise. The Holy Spirit, in other words, that was promised. When was it promised? Acts 2.38. Repent, be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, for the promise is unto you. Amen. Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, dealing with the same thing. Ghost simply means spirit. Amen. Ghost simply means spirit. It's a Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. My God, Mary, how can you say it's God? You better give me John 4, 24, son. Give me John chapter 4. And at verse 24, St. John chapter 4. And at verse 24, what did he say, twin? God is a spirit. Who is God? God is a spirit. And they shall receive that Holy Spirit of promise. Amen. And God is a what? God is a spirit. God is a what? Spirit. What kind of spirit is God? You better give me 1 Peter Psalm 115. God is a spirit. What kind of spirit is God? I want you to stay with me now. 1 Peter chapter 1 and at verse 15, twin, what did it say? But as he which have called you is holy. As he which have called you is holy. So be ye holy in all manner of conversation. He want you to be holy. In all manner of conversation. Why, twin? Because it is written. What's written? Be ye holy. Be ye what? Holy. Why? For I am holy. Be ye holy, for I am holy. Who is this talking? God. God said, be holy, for I am holy. Listen. Listen now. God is a spirit. The Bible letting you know God is holy. In other words, God is that Holy Spirit. God is that Holy Spirit. When you receive the Holy Ghost, when you receive the Holy Spirit, that's God's Spirit that's getting in mankind. Amen. He is holy. He is a spirit. So when you receive the Holy Ghost, that's God getting in mankind. My God, if he choose to call his spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost, that's his business. He can do that. He's God. Do you understand? Hear me talking now. How in the world, what spirit that's... It, where is there a Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost outside of the Holy God? No such thing. Look, Holy Ghost is not a separate spirit from God. When Jesus received the Holy Ghost, what did he receive? What did he receive? Did he receive a spirit that was different from God the Father? Think about it. When Jesus received the Holy Ghost, did he receive a spirit that was different from his father? God the Father ain't filled his son with another spirit. Amen. Give me Acts 2.32, son. Stay with me. I want you to hear me, Trinitarians. No such thing. My God, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit, that's the spirit of God. My God, man, and the scriptures use it interchangeably. Spirit of God, Spirit of Christ, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Get an understanding. What you say, twin? Acts chapter 2, verse 32. What did he say, son? This Jesus have God raised up. This Jesus have God raised up. Well, we are all a witness. Read it, son. Therefore, being by the right hand of God exalted. Being by the right hand of God exalted. And having received of the Father the promise listen, of the Holy Ghost. Listen, Jesus is by the right hand of God, and he's exalted, and having received what? Of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost. What did Jesus receive from the Father? The promise of the Holy Ghost. What did Jesus receive from the Father? The promise of the Holy Ghost. He received the Holy Ghost from the Father. Well, what was in Jesus? Give me 2 Corinthians 5, 19. He received the promise of the Holy Ghost from the Father. So what was that in Jesus? 2 Corinthians son, chapter 5 and verse 19. What did it say? To wit. What? That God was in Christ. God filling with the Holy Ghost. You know what the Bible said? Is that what the Bible said? To wit, that God was in Christ. God filling with the Holy Ghost. Now Paul is letting you know what was in him. To wit, that was God that was in Christ. That was God that was in Christ. But the Bible said he was filled with the Holy Ghost. Somebody said, well, what was he filled with? God. I thought the Bible said it was the Holy Ghost. It was. The Holy Ghost, that's God's spirit. Amen. 
When you receive the Holy Ghost, you're receiving the Spirit of God. Hallelujah to God. That's God getting in mankind. Hear me talking. And one thing about it, when you receive God, you can't hide God. If God is in you of a truth, my God, man, the world will be able to see what's in you. Amen. Hear me talking now. 2 Corinthians 5, 19 said what? To wit that God was in Christ. To wit that God was in Christ. Reconciling the world unto himself. Somebody say, you see that, Mary? God was in Christ. So that means the Father is the Son and the Son is the Father. The Bible, all you got to do is read it. Read it right. God was in Christ. God was in Christ. It didn't say the Father became the Son. God is in Christ. I can say today, God is in Elder Murray. Am I God? No, sir. But God is in me. Do you understand? God is in me. Do you understand? Jesus Christ, my God, was filled with the Spirit of the Holy Ghost, which is the Spirit of God. God is the one who anointed his Son. I want you to give me uh, 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 John, I believe it is, son. Or better yet, give me Luke 4, 18. I want you to give me Luke chapter 4, and at verse 18, then I want Acts 10, 38. Luke 4, 18 first. Now remember Acts chapter 2, my God, man, Jesus was filled with the Holy Ghost. God filled him with the Holy Ghost. Luke 4, 18 said what? The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. But the Bible says he was filled with the Holy Ghost. Now the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of God was upon his Son, which is Jesus the Christ. The Bible said, read that again. The spirit of the Lord is upon me. And what did the spirit do? Because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Spirit of God was upon him on, on, on Jesus Christ. Amen. Now give me Acts chapter 10, son. And at verse number 38, Acts 10, 38. Acts chapter 10 and at verse 38. What did it say, twin? And we are witnesses of all things which he did. Both? Both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem. Talking about Jesus, what did it say? Whom they slew and hanged on they the tree. They slew Jesus and they hung Jesus on the tree. Him God raised up the third day. Read it, son. And showed him openly. Read it, son. Not to all the people. Go back to verse 38. What did it say? How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth. God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with what? With the Holy Ghost. What did God anoint him with? With the Holy Ghost. God anointed his son with the Holy Ghost. God filled his son with the Holy Ghost. God didn't give his son a spirit different from God. Do you understand? That was God, my God, man, that was in his son. To wit, God was in Christ, reconciling the world back unto himself. So when we, we receive the Holy Ghost, we receive the spirit of God. Amen. I also can say we receive the spirit of Christ. Well, how is it the spirit of Christ? Because God is the one that gave Christ his spirit. God is the one who anointed Christ, and he didn't anoint Christ with a different spirit aside from himself. Amen. Do you understand? So I can say I got the spirit of God. I can say I got the spirit of Christ because Christ got his spirit from God. It's one spirit. It's one spirit. It's just one spirit, y'all. Do you understand? But because it's one spirit, that don't make the father the son and the son the father. Look, God the father filled his son with the Holy Ghost. The son in turn filled us with the Holy Ghost. My God, we all got the same spirit that God got, that the son got. Now we got it, but we're not God. We, but we got the same spirit. We're not God, but we got the same spirit. Do you understand? Proof that we got the same spirit. Give me Romans, son, chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, son. And I want you to start reading at verse number 11. Romans chapter 8 and at verse number 11. What did it say, twin? But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead. Listen to this. The spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead. What spirit raised up Jesus from the dead? Was that the spirit of God? Amen. Well, watch this. If the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead, according to the scripture, 1 Corinthians 6, 14, the Lord, God the Father, raised the Lord from the dead. According to Acts 3 and verse 13, God the Father raised his son from the dead. Now the Bible said, if the spirit of him that raised who twin? But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead. The spirit of him. 
that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you. If that spirit dwell where? In you. Is that the spirit of God? Amen. The Bible said, if that spirit that raised Jesus from the dead, if it dwell in you, if it dwell in you, well, Mary, I, I, I got the Holy Ghost. Then you got that spirit that raised him from the dead. Amen. It's not a different spirit. No, sir. Do you understand? If the spirit that raised him from the dead, if that spirit dwell in you, we got to have the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. Amen. What spirit raised Jesus from the dead? The spirit of God. Amen. The spirit of God raised Jesus from the dead. And we got to have the same spirit in us that raised him from the dead. Hallelujah to God. The same spirit. Ain't no two or three different spirits. Holy Ghost, that's the spirit of God. The Bible said what, son? But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead. If the spirit of him. That raised up Jesus from the dead. Dwell in you. If that spirit dwell in you. Read it, son. He that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies. The one, if he dwell in you now. But he got to dwell in you. If the one might go to raise Christ from the dead dwell in you, he shall also do what? He shall also quicken your mortal body. How? By his spirit. By his spirit, that's where? That dwelleth in you. In you. Holy Ghost got to be in you. And when you got the Holy Ghost, you got the Spirit of God. When you got the Holy Ghost, you got the Spirit of Christ. Same thing. Ain't no Trinitarian doctrine. Do you understand? My God, man, the Holy Ghost, that's the Spirit of God. That's how God get in mankind through and by the Holy Ghost. It's not a separate spirit from God. Trinitarians done told a lie here. They done told a lie. My God is the third person in the Trinity. My God, ain't no such thing as that. Amen. Ain't no such thing as that. The Holy Ghost, that's the Spirit of God. Amen. Hallelujah to God. My God, man, hear me talking. Give me Acts 5 and 1, son. Let's see who Adonai's them lied to over here. Acts chapter 5 and verse number 1. Stay with me, brothers and sisters. Acts 5 and 1 said what? But a certain man named Ananias. Read it, son. With Sapphire, his wife. Read it. Sold a possession. They sold a possession. And kept back part of the price. They kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it. Read it, son. And brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. Read it, twin. But Peter said. What did Peter say? Ananias. Ananias. Why have Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Ghost? Lie to who? The Holy Ghost. Do y'all Bible say he lied to the Holy Ghost? Amen. Do your Bible say he lied to the Holy Ghost? Read the book, son. And to keep back part of the price of the land. Read it, son. Whilst it remained, was it not thine own? My God, man, while it remained, while it was yours, it was yours to do with it whatever you choose. What did he say? And after it was sold. What? Was it not in thine own power? Read it, son. Why hast thou conceived this thing in thine heart? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? Thou hast not lied unto men. You ain't lied to man. But unto God. Who did you lie to? Unto God. But the Bible first said he lied to the Holy Ghost. Amen. Now the Bible said he lied to God. Bible first said he lied to the Holy Ghost. Now it's letting you know you lied to God. When you receive the Holy Ghost, that's the spirit of God that you receive. Ain't no third person in no trinity. My God, you need a teacher. Amen. You need somebody, my God, man, that God is dealing with to teach you what the Bible is saying here. Hear me talking. Romans son, chapter 8 and verse 9. Romans chapter 8 and at verse number 9. No such thing as a Trinitarian doctrine. My God, man. Romans chapter 8 and at verse 9. What did it say, son? But ye are not in the flesh. Paul said you're not in the flesh. But in the spirit. What you in? In the spirit. Read it. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Spirit of who? God. Spirit of who? God. That's the Holy Ghost. If the spirit of God dwell in you. Read it, son. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ. Wait a minute. Any man have not who? Spirit of Christ. But the Bible first said if what? Spirit of God. Now it's saying what? Spirit of Christ. But what did it first say? Spirit of God. But now what is it saying? Spirit of Christ. Is it two separate spirits? No, sir. The spirit of God is the spirit of Christ. It's the same thing. Amen. Spirit of God is the spirit of Christ. 
My God, I can say I got the spirit of God. I can say I got the spirit of Christ. I can say I got the Holy Ghost. I can say I got the Holy Spirit. I can, I can say I got the spirit of adoption. I can say I got the spirit of truth. I'm saying the same thing. Hear me talk. You got some that clan, my God, man, you know, they, they, they got the Holy Ghost, but our God ain't got in them. It's, a, it's like it's something different. That's the, that's the third person. I got the third person in the Trinity. My God, you couldn't read that stuff to save your life. Yes, sir. The purpose of the Holy Ghost. If you truly got the Holy Ghost, you'll know that the Trinitarian doctrine is wrong. Yes, sir. You know why? Because let me show what the Holy Ghost is going to do for you. Amen. Give me John, son. Let me, let me show you what the Holy Ghost is going to do for you. Hear me talking. St. John chapter 14, twin. Let's start at verse 26, son, then we'll ride. St. John 14 and at verse 26. Let me show you the purpose of the Holy Ghost and other titles and functions of the Holy Ghost. John 14, 26 said what? But the comforter. Here the Holy Ghost is wearing the title comforter. And God knows, y'all, the Holy Ghost is a comforter. Amen. When God get in you, God knows he will comfort you. I say if God get down in you, he will comfort you. In the midst of confusion, if you got God, my God, he'll bring about a level of comfort. Everybody needs the Holy Ghost. Amen. In this hour, everybody needs the Holy Ghost. All God's people need the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost itself is a teacher. You need a teacher on the inside, not just a teacher in the pulpit. Amen. Because sometimes the pulpit can get off. But if you got a teacher on the inside, that teacher will never get off. Amen. You need a teacher on the inside. Yes, sir. And that way you won't be deceived by these lying teachers in the pulpit. Amen. I want you to hear me talking now. You need a teacher on the inside, and the Holy Ghost is a teacher. Amen. Hallelujah to God. If you got the Holy Ghost, when the, my God, the liar up here say something, if you got the right spirit, my God, it's like a bell will go off. Alarm, red flags, everything in you crying out, that ain't right. That ain't right. The spirit, Jesus is going to let you know, will bring old things back to your memory. If you got the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will talk to you. Do you hear me talking? I don't care if you're a sister, the Holy Ghost will talk to you. Won't tell you to go preach, but God knows it'll talk to you. My God, if you got the Holy Ghost. My God, a preacher say something against the Son of God. Tell you the Son of God from the womb to the tomb, womb to the cross, Holy Ghost will stand up in you. Say, no, that ain't right. That ain't right. Amen. Hallelujah to God. You got the Holy Ghost. When that fella up here tell you that women can preach, my God, the Holy Ghost will stand up in you. Say, oh, no, 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 look at him. That don't agree with my spirit. Something in me is crying out saying, that ain't right. I can't receive that. You need a teacher on the inside. You need a teacher on the inside. You need something on the inside that can talk to you. That way you'll know when you're being lied to. Amen. Yes, sir. I want you to hear me talking. Yes, sir. You need a teacher. You need something on the inside. My God, we follow men as they follow Christ, the Bible said. But if you got something on the inside, when that man get off, you're able to say that ain't right right there. He done amen. got off now. Amen. I can't follow that. I can't say amen to that. You got to have something on the inside. I want you to hear me talking. You better have something on the inside. Amen. I want you to hear me talking now. The Bible says, what, son? But the comforter. John 14, 26. But the comforter, which is, which the, is Holy the Holy Ghost. That's the spirit of God. Amen. That's the spirit of Christ. That get down in a man. The amen. comforter. Which is the Holy Ghost. What did he say, son? But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Which is the Holy Ghost. Whom the Father will send in my name. My God, man, the Father will send him in my name. You see, while Jesus was walking with them, he kept them. He had them. He told the Father, I've lost none but one. My God, and that's Judas, that scripture may be fulfilled. Amen. He was able to keep them all. My God, but he told them, I got to get out of here. My God, because God going to do a new thing. He going to send something that he going to put down within you. My God, and you ain't going to need a man to tell you everything. That'll be a teacher down on the inside of you. But in order for that spirit to come, I got to get out of here. Amen. Do you understand? 
You see, Jesus wasn't in them physically when he was walking around with them. My God, but when he got out of here, my God, man, the Holy Ghost came. What is that? That's God. That's Christ getting inside of man now. Amen. Getting on the inside of man. Talking with man. Counseling with man's mind. My God, man, chastening man. Man, get off God. My God, take a sleep from him. Do you understand? Oh, this Amen. is the Holy Ghost. Amen. I want you to hear me talking. 14, 26, John said, what twin? But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. The comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. Whom the Father will send in my name. The Father. Going to send him. But Jesus said, he's coming in my name now. Amen. Do you hear what the Bible said? Amen. He's coming in my name. What is he saying? In order for him to come, in order for you to receive him, you got to acknowledge me. Because he's coming in my name. He's coming in the name of the Son of God. Yes, you sir. got to acknowledge the Son again. Yes, sir. The Father going to send him in my name. What did he say, son? Whom the Father will send in my name. What did he say, twin? He shall teach you all things. He going to teach you? Amen. Did it say teach you? He shall teach you Some all things. things. All things. Some things? All things. You see, when you get the Holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost will teach you all things. When you hear the word, the Holy Ghost, my God, is what will make you bear witness to the word Amen. of God. Yes, sir. You see, the spirit that's coming from coming forth from here, if you got the same spirit in you, because remember what Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are spirit. So when the spirit is being delivered, if you got the same spirit of that which is being delivered, it will bear witness to your spirit and make you say amen to it. Amen. It'll make you bear witness to the spirit that's coming forth. But if you got the right spirit, and the wrong spirit is up here telling you something contrary to what the spirit right here done said. It's not going to bear witness to your spirit if you got the right spirit. But if your spirit is corrupt, the spirit up here is corrupt. Corruption will bear witness to corruption. I want you to hear me talking. now. Like people, like priests. I want you to hear me talking. You got to have the right spirit. What we're preaching here out of the book, in order for you to receive it, you got to have the right spirit. Amen. So many are fighting it because you don't have the right spirit. Amen. If you got the right spirit, the spirit that's in you will bear witness to the spirit that's being delivered. Amen. That's it. Hallelujah to God. Ain't nothing wrong with the message that's being delivered. There's something wrong with your spirit. Amen. Do you understand? Yes, sir. That's what's taking place. Something Amen. wrong with your spirit. Spirit will bear witness to the spirit. Hallelujah to God. What did he say, twin? He shall teach you all things. The Holy Ghost. It's a comforter. And it'll teach you. Did it say all things? All things. All things. I love that. All things. Give me 1 John, son. Chapter 2 and verse 27. 1 John, chapter 2. And at verse number 27. What did he say, twin? First John chapter 2 and start at verse 27, son. I want to show you that the Holy Ghost is a teacher. First John 2, 27 said what? But the anointing which you have received of him. The anointing. The anointing. That's the spirit, y'all. The anointing that you have received of him. Abide in you. Where to abide? In you. That's the Holy Ghost. That's that anointing that abides within you. And what it say, twin? And you need not that any man teach you. Man, they got to tell you everything. No, sir. Do you understand? You need not that any man teach. My, I know the scriptures are how can you hear without a preacher? My God, you got to have a preacher. God's going to send a preacher. But Amen. let me tell you some preacher don't have to tell you everything. Amen. No, sir. If you got that anointing in you, it's a teacher. Do you hear me talk? You ain't got to never heard a preacher say nothing. My God, about a particular subject, but you go to do that thing, something in you say, don't do that. Amen. Don't do it. Amen. My God, man, it bring about condemnation and conviction. You ain't never heard a word against it, but something on the inside said, don't do it. Amen. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Later on, you may hear a word. You may hear a word later on, my God, against that thing. And then the Holy Ghost will remind you. You remember when I told you don't do it? I had already told you not to do it. Do you understand? The Holy Ghost is a teacher itself. It's a teacher. 
Hallelujah to God. What did it say, son? You need not that any man teach. You need not that any man teach. But that's the same anointing teach if you of all things. The same anointing. That same anointing that's in you, it'll teach you all things. Did it say all things? All things. You see, the anointing that's in you, it is what, my God, man, will cause you to bear witness to the word that's being delivered. Amen. Spirit bearing witness to the spirit. Amen. Hear me talking. Go back to where you were, son. Give me John 15, 26. Give me St. John chapter 15 and at verse 26. My God, man, it is critical for all God's people to have the Holy Ghost. You're, we're not, we, listen, y'all, we're in a time right now where you got to have this teacher on the inside. You know why? So much is being said out here now. Amen. So much is being told out here now. Yes, sir. And people, as the scripture said in Hebrews, they don't have their senses exercised to be able to discern good and evil. Amen. So this stuff, my God, coming to their ears, and before you know it, they're excited about it. Amen. Yeah, amen. As a man of God. This is what they do, bro. As a man of God. And, and, and man, if you and look here, here's somebody over here with right spirit saying, how can he be a man of God? How can he? This man said he's an apostle, and yet he denying the one that sent the apostles. Amen. Do you see how the Holy Ghost will be talking to you? Listen to Elder Murray. I don't want to deal with this today, but I want to just, let me drop this in your spirit. Let me tell you something. Men can say that they are apostles. That's fine. They can say they're casting devils out. They can say they're raising the dead. They can say all these things. You know what? Elder Murray, don't get excited. No, sir. I don't budge. I, look, I don't even want to look around Elder. Because after all the dust is settled, they come together and have service, a whole lot of excitement. Everybody just running. They, they just, just, oh, just. No problem. When you stop running, Amen. when the dust settles, yes, when you get done casting out your demons, then I want to know, what, what do you believe? Amen. Who do you believe in? All right, you say you're an apostle, you done cast out devils, you done did this, you done did that. Is Jesus Christ the Son of God? Amen. Is he in heaven at the right hand of God the Amen. Father? And when you say no because that's what you believe, Amen. all that other stuff, it's a waste of time. Amen. It's in vain. Amen. Your foundation is wrong. Amen. But all this excitement for them who don't have their senses exercised, it gets their attention. Oh, look what they doing. Look what they doing. Man, I'm sitting with my legs crossed. Folks don't even believe in the son of God. Amen. This stuff is foolishness. It's clear cut foolishness. But people who don't have the right spirit, they'll eat that mess up. And they, they, they put this stuff out and try to publish it like they show nothing's of God. Don't, look here. Don't even look around at it. Don't pay it no mind. Because let me tell you some Ella Murder talk to these fellas. And they don't believe in the Son of God. Nothing else matters. Amen. Nothing else matters if they ain't got the Son of God right. You ain't even on the right foundation. Amen. Do you understand? That's what they do, brother. Come up about with fair words to deceive the hearts of the simple. Amen. Don't pay this mess no mind. Folks got to have a teacher on the inside. This is prophecy. Give me Matthew, son, 7. I ain't want to work on this, but just give me a moment. Matthew chapter 7, start at verse 21, twin. Hear me talking. Don't be deceived by none of this commotion that you see taking place. Amen. Matthew chapter 7 and that verse 21, what did it say, twin? Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord. Shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. The Lord's name is Jesus. Amen. So because they're out here saying, Lord, Lord, or Jesus, Jesus. Don't look here. Don't be sold by that. No, sir. Because a lot of these fellows who's using the name Jesus, they're not talking about the son of God. Yeah, man. They got a mouthful of Jesus, but they're not talking about the one that came from Nazareth. But they're using the name. 
to get your attention by questioning these demons. Say, so what Jesus are you talking about? Are you talking about the one from Nazareth that God raised from the dead that's at the right hand of the Father? Is that the one you're talking about? When they tell you, no, he's dead. The father's holding that title now. Run from these hypocrites. Yeah. Get away from them. Yes, sir. Run from them. They're denying your savior. I don't care how much work they say they do. I don't care. Don't be deceived by commotion. There's a spirit of deception that's sweeping the land. And those who don't have their senses exercised are getting swept up in the commotion. Getting swept up in it. Amen. Brothers who even know better that's been told better. Amen. You know better. Amen. Fellas running around here baptizing infants. Baptizing the babies in the hands. And they want to say something wrong with us. Well, say, we got a problem. Tell the parents, save your children, save your children. Peter said, save yourself. Amen. Peter said, save yourself. Save yourself. How do you save yourself? You got to have a knowledge of this thing and believe this thing. A one-year-old, two-year-old, six-month-old, they don't know nothing. They can't repent. What do, I, what do my grandbaby, one-year-old, know about repentance? Amen. To baptize her will be for her and her, for, will be for her dad and her mama, not for her. Amen. Yeah, amen. amen. That will satisfy them, not her. Because it ain't doing nothing for her. Because she don't know what she's doing. She's ignorant. And the time of this ignorance, God winked at. That child is ignorant. Amen. Amen. But people get swept up in the commotion. They've been deceived by a lot of commotion that's going on. Eight chapter of the book of Acts. Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. The eunuch said, see his water. My, my one-year-old can't say that. Come on now. But look here. See, see his water. What, what do it him to me to be baptized? My grandbaby can't talk like that. Amen. See his water. What do it him to me to be baptized? My God, his response was, if thou believest. Okay, if Amen. I ask her if she believes, what's she going to say? She's going to look at Papa. Amen. It's deception. They say, you know, my six-month-old received the Holy Ghost. How you know? Who told you? So mercy spoke in an unknown tongue. All six-month-olds speak in unknown tongues. All of them do. Every six-month-old speak in an unknown tongue. Yes. And it ain't got nothing to do with the Holy Ghost. Yes, sir. My grandbabies, both of them back there, both speak in an unknown tongue. <laughs> do you hear me talking? I can't understand their tongue. It's an unknown tongue. Amen. It ain't got nothing to do with the Holy Ghost. Wake up, people. Wake up. Amen. Never mind the commotion. Doctrine. Doctrine. That's it. That's it. Amen. You got to go back to doctrine, man. Apostles, my God, marry other men wives. Amen. Don't, don't bother that. Why? Why? Why not bother? If you're going to claim a preacher to be a preacher, the Bible told me, rebuke them sharply. Amen. That others may feel. Amen. How in the world, I'm an apostle, I'm going to marry another man's wife. Amen. That man come to the knowledge of the truth and want his wife back. What's going to happen then? Are you going to give her back? Don't bother me, man. Have his own wife. But they just want to shout. Just have a lot of commotion. You better stop shouting and open the book. Come on back to doctrine. I'm not in ministry for friendship. This ain't about friendship. My God, I love everybody. But I'm not going to go against that word for nobody. I don't care about fellowshipping my God with all these spirits because John told me not to. Amen. I love everybody, but I can't let everybody up here. And if these men truly had confidence in what they believe, 
when we meet, they are told they would have told me. But they keep it hid until it slip out. There's no way I'm gonna put a man up here that don't believe in the Son of God. Not at all. Do you hear what I say? There's no way I'm gonna put a man up here that's got another man's wife. No, sir. It will not happen. I don't care. Murray, you ain't have nobody to fellowship. As long as Jesus fellowship with me, I'm all right. John said, if they don't bring this doctor, is that what he said? He said, if they don't bring this doctor, this one right here, second epistle of John, son. My God, man, start at verse number eight. If they don't bring this doctor, I don't care. My God, if they call fire down from heaven and burn up an oak tree, and I'm looking right at it. I saw the flame come down. I see the oak tree burning. Squirrels just running out the tree. Everything. My, I'm, I'm, look at, I, look at, my God, my hands crossed. I'm just looking at the tree burn. When the tree burn all the way down to the ground, I'm saying, uh-uh, apostle. Is Jesus Christ the son of God? Is he in heaven at the right hand of the father? Is the son of God coming back at the end to judge us? When he say no, that's God the father holding title son. Then you and your oak tree and your fire is all of the devil. I don't care them about know what you say you're doing. Amen. Doctrine, man. I'm stuck in doctrine. I'm not stuck in commotion and excitement. I'm stuck in doctrine. Amen. I can read scripture where a lot of excitement was going on, even in the days of the prophet. Do you understand? Earthquake. My God, rocks rent. My God, the Bible said, but God wasn't in it. Oh, it was a lot of commotion, but the Bible spoke plain. God was not in it. Amen. He wasn't in it. But then, a still, small voice, something calm, still, small voice. That the Lord right there. But the people automatically would assume that all the excitement, that's God. Amen. No, sir. That is to deceive you. Amen. That is to get your attention. Do you understand? That's to get your attention. That's what all the excitement is about. Second epistle of John, so start at verse 8. What did it say? Look to yourselves. Look to yourselves. That we lose not those things which we have wrought. What did he say, son? But that we receive a full reward. What you talking about, John? Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ. Don't abide where? In the doctrine of Christ. What's their condition? Have not God. Do y'all hear what the Bible just said? Whosoever transgresseth and abide not in the doctrine of Christ don't have God. Amen. Read it, twin. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ. He have both the Father and the Son. So the doctrine of Christ consists of the Father and the Son. It didn't say nothing about the Father holding the title Son. It said it, they have both the father. It said both, both the father it and said the son. Both. They have both the father and the son. That's the doctrine of Christ. Amen. What did it say, twin? If there come any unto you. Any? Amen. Did, do y'all Bible say any? Any. That's got everybody. And what what did it say, twin? And bring not this doctrine. What doctrine? The doctrine of the father and the son. What did it say, son? Receive him not into your house. And what else? Neither bid him God speak. Read it, twin. For he that bid of him Godspeed is what? Is partaker of his evil deeds. I'm looking at the word. I'm not looking at shouting. No, I'm not looking at excitement. I'm looking at the word of God. I think about all these people that I've had to take back to water that come to me after they done grown up and they got knowledge of baptism, what it's all about. They come to me and want to get baptized, or want me to take them back to water. And, and in conversating with them, many of them was baptized as little kids. But they don't know what was saying. They, they don't know, they ain't know nothing about repentance. Now they done grown up and they want to get it right. What good is it baptizing these little infants? They, they are clueless in what they're doing. Amen. I want y'all to listen to Ella Murray. That's an accident waiting to happen. Yes, sir. Listen to me. Yes, sir. Mark my word. That is an accident waiting to happen. 
somebody going to get hurt. You're going to allow your deception to cause somebody to get hurt. When I'm baptizing grown folk, I tell them after I pray, when I get ready to take you down, you can hold your nose. Well, the water don't go up in your nose. Get into your lungs. A six-month-old don't know nothing about that. You put that baby under that water and that baby inhale and bring that water in their lungs, you're going to find yourself in a lawsuit. Do you understand? Amen. Somebody said, no, God going to be with us. No, God ain't with that foolishness. He's not with it. I've tried to talk to brothers who believe this foolishness, and they won't listen. They won't listen. I talked to one about baptizing these little babies that can't even talk. I said, brother, we can eliminate this right now. I said, all you got to do is give me one scripture. Where the apostles, Jesus, anybody baptized a little baby. I said, give me the scripture, bro. I said, just one. Hmm. And my mouth is stopped because the Bible teaches us prove all things. My mouth is stopped. Give me the scripture. Do you know they started looking? They said, okay, okay. Let me show you the scripture they got. Give me Acts, son, 16. <laughs> Give me Acts 16. And I want you to start reading to me around about verse 28. I want to get straight to the point. This is the jail law. Watch what's going to happen. Acts 16 and at verse 28. What did it say? But Paul cried with a loud voice. What did he say? Saying, do thyself no harm. Talking to the jail, the keeper of the, of the jail there, telling them, do yourself no harm. For we are all here. We're all here. Then he called for a light and sprang in and what came say, trembling. Son? And fell down before Paul and Silas. He fell down before Paul and Silas. And brought them out and said. What did he say? Sir. Sir. What must I do to be saved? What must I do to be saved? What did he say? And they said. What? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Did it say believe? Believe. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Continue to read, twin. And thou shalt be saved and thy house. And your who? Thy house. And, your, and they who? And thy house. Read it, son. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord. Read it. And to all that were in his house. Read it. And he to all that was where? In his house. All that was where? In his house. And what happened? And he took them the same hour of the night. And did what? And washed his stripes and was baptized. Where the Bible said all that was in their house. They told him, see that mirror? He said all that was in his house. So you know houses, you know, some folks have little babies in their houses. I said, really? That's where you're going? So you're assuming Amen. that because it said all the house, Amen. there was an infant in there that got baptized. That that spoon again at a gunfight. When you come with stuff like that, it's because you have nothing. You have Amen. nothing. Amen. That's an assumption. You can't read that. The Bible, because it said all this house, it never said nothing about an infant. Folks get caught up in all this excitement, man. And people just start cleaving to the excitement. But let me tell you something. It's going to run its course. Yes, sir. The only thing that's going to stand the test of time is what's written in this book right here. The rest of this stuff is just a phase. It's going to run its course. And when it get done running its course, this right here gonna still be standing. Amen. Yes, sir. I want you to hear, Murray. We're trying to help you. Don't get caught up in excitement. Stick with doctrine, what you can read. This is why everybody needs the Holy Ghost, brother. Amen. Everybody needs the Holy Ghost, something on the inside that will talk to you. All right, I heard what that fellow up here said, but what is that saying that's on the inside of you? If ain't nothing in there, ain't nothing. Look here, they can't talk. Amen. Because ain't nothing in you. Amen. You got to have the Holy Ghost. The Bible said, give me John, son, 16, 13. St. John chapter 16. And at verse 13, the purpose of the Holy Ghost, you got to have God down on the inside of you. St. John 16, 13 said, what? How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come. Give me verse of 1526, John 1526 first. What did it say, twin? But when the comforter is come. When the comforter, the Holy Ghost, 
I love the different titles that the Holy Ghost wear. Amen. Comforter. God knows it'll comfort you. That's not just ink on paper right there. The Holy Ghost will comfort you. This is why it's critical for all the saints to have the Holy Ghost. When you're going through, I don't care how dark, how bleak things look, you got something on the inside that'll bring about comfort. Amen. I'm speaking by God from experience. The Holy Ghost will comfort you. Everything around you, like it's collapsing, nobody, my God, is like there to help you, but you feel, you're feeling pretty good about it. Amen. You got a comforter on the inside. Amen. You've got to have the Holy Ghost. What did he say, son? But when the comforter is come. When the comforter is come. Whom I will send unto you from the Father. I'm going to send it. From the Father. It's coming from the Father, mm -hmm. but it's coming through the Son. Do you understand? Just like God the Father filled the Son with the Holy Ghost, he gave the Son the authority and the power to fill us with the Holy Ghost. Yeah. Remember the Bible said the one you see the Spirit descending upon and remaining upon is the one that baptizes you with the Holy Ghost. John said, by God, truly this is the Son of God. Son of God baptizes us with the Holy Ghost. What did the Bible say, son? But when the comforter is come. When the comforter is come. Whom I will send unto you from the Father. I will send unto you from the Father. Even the spirit of truth. What did he call it? The spirit of truth. The spirit of truth. Why is it called the spirit of truth? It's a spirit that will guide you into truth. Amen. It's a spirit that will never guide you wrong. I want you to hear Ella Murray. If you got the Holy Ghost, and if you listen to the Holy Ghost at all times, you won't sin. Amen. Do you hear what I just said? Because the Holy Ghost is perfect. That's God's spirit. That's God in man. If you got the Holy Ghost and you listen to the Holy oh, it's going to talk to you now. Amen. Remember, Jesus said the comforter will bring all things back to your memory. If you got the Holy Ghost and if you listen to the Holy Ghost at all times, you will not sin. Sin comes about when we lean to our own understanding. Yes, it does. Amen. Sin comes about when the flesh overrides the spirit. Amen. The sin comes about when you allow your desire to, over, over, to override what's talking to you from the inside. That's when you're seeing, brother. That's when you, you you got the Holy Ghost, my God, but you ain't listening to it right now. Amen. It's talking, but you don't want to hear it right now. You want to lean to your flesh right now, but the Holy Ghost still talking to you. It's still talking. One thing about the Holy Ghost, it's going to do its job. The Spirit going to do its job. It's going to tell you, don't do that. Don't say that. My God, turn, go the other direction. But you've got to be willing to hearken, however it hurt the flesh, hearken to the Spirit. Amen. If you listen to the Spirit, if you're hearken to the Spirit, you won't sin. Sin comes about when we lean to our own understanding. Do you understand? Holy Ghost will always do his job. What the Bible says, son? When the comforter is come. When the comforter is come. Whom I will send unto you from the Father. I will send unto you from the Father. Even the spirit of truth. Even the spirit of truth. Which proceeded from, from the Father. Do you hear what he said? Spirit of truth. It proceeded from the Father. He said, but I'm going to send it to you now. You see, why is he going to send it? Remember, it's a certain belief you got to have before you receive it. Amen. Jesus said, he that believeth on me, as the scripture have said, out of his belly going to flow rivers of living water. So you got to believe on him right first, and then he sent the Holy Ghost. That's the spirit of God or the spirit of Christ that gets in man. Read it, son. Even the spirit of truth. Even the spirit of truth. Which proceeded from the Father. It proceeded from the Father. He shall testify me. Stop a minute. Stop a minute now. It, you should, it should do what, sir? He shall testify of me. The spirit of truth going to testify of who? Of me. It's not hard not to figure out who's got the Holy Ghost Amen. and who don't have it. Amen. Listen to what the Bible has just said, saints. When the spirit of truth has come, what is it going to do to it? He shall testify of me. That's the son of God talking. Amen. The son said when the spirit come, it's going to make you talk about him. Is that what your old Bible said? Amen. 
So, so, so uh, one that's got the Holy Ghost, a preacher that's got the Holy Ghost, he got to preach Jesus. Amen. No choice. He don't have a choice. Amen. The Holy Ghost, by God, it makes him talk about Jesus. Amen. I don't have a choice. What's in me, my God, it makes me talk about Jesus. Amen. Yes, sir. Do you understand? It makes me talk about Jesus. So all he talk about is Jesus. That's right. It let me know I got the right spirit. It's in my heart. It's in my heart, y'all. I, I, I got the can't help it. Why? Because that's a spirit in me that makes me keep talking about Jesus. Do you understand? I thank God for that spirit. It's a Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that keeps me talking about the Holy One that came out from the Holy Father. Notice everything holy. I got the Holy Ghost. My God, man, it makes me talk about the Holy One that came out from the Holy Father. Amen. Everything just holy, holy, holy. He's been talking now. Everything holy. Jesus prayed and called the Father the Holy Father. Amen. Do you understand? The devil even saw the Son of God coming and said, I know who we know who thou art. You're the Holy One of God. Amen. Do you understand? Look here, the Holy One of God. Then the Holy Ghost, my God, man, is poured out within us so that we can become holy. Amen. Hallelujah to God. Yes, Everything holy, brother. You got the Holy Father. You got the Holy One, which is the Holy Son of God. Remember, my God, Angel Gabriel told Mary that holy thing. The holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the son of God. Yes, you see, the holy father sent his holy son, which was that holy thing, so that we can become holy. Amen. Everything holy, y'all. Everything holy. Everything is holy. Holy father, holy son will produce a holy people. Hallelujah to God. The Bible called us a holy nation. A royal priesthood. That's because we believe in the Holy Father that sent his Holy Son that gave us the Holy Ghost. I thank God for the holiness. Amen. Holiness. I thank God for holiness. Hear me talking. Come on, saying that song, holiness. That's what God is calling for, holiness. Do you understand? That's what he requires. Amen. Holiness. That's what he requires, holiness. Amen. He requires holiness. But in order to be holy, you got to believe in the Holy Father. You got to believe in the Holy Thing, which is the Holy One, that we can receive the Holy Spirit, yes, that yes, we sir. can become holy. Yes, sir. Amen. I want you to hear me talking. It's all about holiness. My God, that's all right. Man, we better close out with that one. Holiness. Holiness. That's what it's calling for. Holiness. I want you to hear me talking. He's calling for holiness. In order to be holy, we got to have the Holy Father. Amen. Is that what Jesus called him? Yes, sir. Jesus called him the Holy Father. My God, Gabriel told Mary that holy thing that's going to be born of you shall be called the Son of God. The devil saw Jesus coming and said, we know who you are. You that holy one of God. Everything holy. He come along and tell us, now y'all be holy. Everything is holiness. Amen. I wish everybody could see this, brother. I wish you could you look. I wish you could see it. Amen. I wish y'all could feel what I feel. I wish you, you could get it. Oh, it feels good. It feels good when the veil is removed and you see holiness. You see Jesus. You got you got brothers professing. My God, they believe in holiness, but then they left out the Holy One. You can't believe in holiness without the Holy One. Do you understand? No, you cannot be holy without the Holy One. No, the Holy One came and left us an example that we can be holy by following His steps. Amen. Amen. We got to have it, brother. <laughs> we can't do nothing. Follow peace with all men and holiness. Without, without no man shall see the Lord. But in order for you, my God, to follow peace with all men, my God, and be holy, you got to believe in the Holy One. Amen. I wish everybody could get it. I wish everybody could get it. John 15, 26 again, twin. But, but when the confidence so, comes, when the confidence comes, whom I will send unto you from the Father, I'm gonna send him to you. Even the spirit of truth. Even the spirit of truth. Which proceeded from the Father. What he gonna do, twin? He shall testify me. Amen. Anytime a person got the Holy Ghost, Spirit of God, Spirit of Christ, Spirit of Adoption, however you want to title it. 
that person got to preach Jesus. Amen. He don't have a choice. No, he don't have a choice. Amen. Let me tell y'all something. I can come and teach a lot of things. But let me tell you, it's going to either start with Jesus or it's going to end with Jesus. But you cannot properly teach nothing out of that book without Jesus. Do, do you get it? Amen. You, somebody said, well, we, I'm going to teach love, Murray. You can't do it without teaching Jesus. Greater love have no man in this. That a man lay down his life for his friends. Amen. That's Jesus. Amen. You can't teach love without teaching Jesus. Well, Mer, we're just going to teach baptism today. What, what, you better start with Jesus now. Because the baptism represents his death, his burial, his resurrection. Amen. Yeah. Well, Mer, we're going to talk about repentance. You better talk about Jesus. Amen. Because, brother and sisters, we are able to repent because of Jesus. He didn't want to atone for us. Amen. Do you understand? Well, Mary, we're just going to talk about marriage. You, you can't talk about it without Jesus. No, sir. Because the church is his bride. Amen. And he, my God, man, he showed us in scripture how to treat a wife by the, by the way he treated the church. Amen. Do you hear me talking now? Everything starts with Jesus, brother. Amen. See, it ain't no way in the world you can get around teaching nothing properly without the son of God, Jesus Christ. Amen. Not possible. Amen. So, Mary, we're going to teach about the apostles today. Well, you better try to start with the chief apostle. Amen. Amen. And high priest of our profession, what's his name? Christ Jesus. Amen. Where you want to start at? Name the subject. Amen. It starts and finishes with Jesus. That's why the Bible called him the author. And the finisher of our faith, meaning our belief, it starts and it finishes with the Son of God. And I don't apologize. I don't apologize. He said, without me, you can do nothing. You can't do that. Somebody said, well, Mary, we're just going to pray to God the Father. <laughs> Jesus said, when you pray, do it in my name. Amen. How you gonna get around him? Hey, look here. Somebody said, Well, I'm just gonna go by before the Father. Jesus said, He the door. Amen. By me, he said, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. Amen. Do you know what I'm saying? Whatever you do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus. Jesus. Giving thanks to God and the Father by him. You can't do nothing without the Son of God. Nothing. Amen. You're gonna heal somebody. You're going to cast devils out. And you're going to leave the Son of God out. You don't believe in him, but you say you're casting devils out. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give I unto thee in the name. The apostles let you know who they believed in. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. That's the Son of God. This is doctrine. Amen. You see, we ain't running around the church. No, you know, you're looking, we, we, we had a good praise service. Folks rejoice. My God, some shouted. But it's time now to get some doctrine in you. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It's time to get some doctrine in you now that'll hold you. That little shout. My God, you done got your breath back now. But you need something now that'll hold you. And that's where doctrine comes in. 15, 26, John, we got to get out of here, bro. What did it say? But when the comforter has come, comforter has come, whom I will send unto you from the Father. What are you going to do? Even the spirit of truth. Even the spirit of truth. Which proceeded from the Father. What's he going to have? He shall testify me. You got the Holy Ghost, the spirit of truth. It's going to make you talk about Jesus. Amen. They say they're the truth of God. Amen. Truth of God is Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus Christ is the truth of God. Amen. Do you understand? Jesus declared, I'm the way and I'm the truth. He's the truth of God. He's God's truth. Well, you, who's your truth? Some said they got the whole truth. How you got the whole truth and you left out the truth? Paul said the truth is in Jesus. Amen. Is that what he said? Yeah, he truth. said the truth is in Jesus. How you the whole truth and the left out the truth? Amen. You the whole truth without the truth. That's a whole lie. Amen. Amen. 
Without Jesus, we can't do nothing. Amen. It is critical for the saints to have the Holy Ghost today. So man cannot tell you any and everything. It is critical for you to have the Holy Ghost. Otherwise than that, your sense is not exercised to discern. Man come along and tell you anything. You don't know no better. You just say amen. He's a man of God. I don't believe he'll lie. Let me tell you some men of God, these so-called men of God, they lie all the time. I say as Paul said in Titus, they're always lying. Always. Take it from me, a preacher. My God, I deal with preachers all the time. They always lie. Always lie. Amen. It's hard to find one to tell you the truth. Amen. Always lie. And I always want to say, God said, shut up. Amen. God ain't told you that lie. God said, hush your mouth. God speak according to the word. How do you know you have the Holy Ghost? What experience will you have when one received the Holy Ghost? So I'm saying, well, I got baptized, so I know I got it. Well, that's scripture. Many have been deceived by that. They've been taught because they got in water, somebody baptized them in the name of Jesus Christ, automatically, right then, they got the Holy Ghost. The Bible don't talk like that. Now, let me tell you something. Some folks that got baptized did receive the Holy Ghost coming up out the water. That can happen. But it's not automatic just because you get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ that automatically mean you got the Holy Ghost. No. In order for you to have the Holy Ghost, you must have the same experience they had in that Bible. The exact same experience. Do not come with nothing else. They come, they got all kinds of experiences now that we can't read. My grandfather, God bless his soul. My God, he's in his grave today. He died 90-something years old. He shared with me when he received the Holy Ghost. I was a young man. The Lord opened my understanding of the truth. Grandpa started telling me, he said, boy, I was down in the woods. Down in the woods, and I, I was praying. He said, man, and all in a sudden, son. He says, I heard some coming through the woods. He says, sound like a swarm of bees. Somebody said, well, what happened? That's it. Bees came through the woods. He came out of the woods saying he saved. He got a hold of He heard a swarm of bees. That's a honeybee salvation. I can't read that, bro. I can't read that. Amen. Look, out. I, I don't want to go to sleep stretched out across here trusting in a honeybee salvation. I want what I can read. Now, all these different experiences, my God, different ways that brothers coming up with today to receive the Holy Ghost. Saints don't trust that stuff. Amen. Do not trust that stuff. And you that's trying to, my God, peddle that stuff, my God, you need to abandon it and get away from it. Jesus told him, go to Jerusalem. Give me Luke, son, 24, 49. He told him to go to Jerusalem and stay right there. Don't, don't, don't you move. You stay right in Jerusalem. Luke 24, 20, start at verse 49, son. And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. Did he say, I said? I send the promise of my father upon you. That promise of the father, meaning the Holy Ghost, the son is saying, I'm going to send him unto you. What did he say, twin? But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. I'm going to send the promise of my father, but y'all wait now. Wait on the promise. Don't run ahead of the promise. And this is what so many have done. They ran ahead of the promise. They didn't wait on the promise. They just jumped up. Some want to preach so bad they just jumped up. I got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Some that came through here. Some that came right through here wanted to preach. My God, man, I talked to him about speaking in tongues. Oh, no, that ain't for everybody. But they want to preach. You will never preach here with, with no Holy Ghost. Amen. You get up here and mess around and cuss. Amen. <laughs> Amen. You, 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 I just seen it happen. I, I just seen it happen. It happened not too long ago, they tell me. <laughs> We was at a place, my God, myself and twin and them and whatnot, and, and whatnot, preach up, they just talking. Before you know it, they say he cussed. 
No Holy Ghost. It slipped out. It shouldn't have been there. It can't slip out if it's not in there. He getting on the people, my God, man, about their character and all this kind of stuff. Before you know it, he done cussed. <laughs> Is that what happened? Amen. Dude, he had nothing to keep him, bro. What he got couldn't even rile his tongue. Up before people, he couldn't rile his tongue. He slipped and cussed. And I'm standing over there. I was talking to somebody, so I didn't hear it. But different ones started coming over. Did you hear what he said? <laughs> what did he say? He cussed. You know, I have no big deal. I kept on talking. You know, made, look, made me, look, he ain't got the Holy Ghost. That's all right. Most of these fellas ain't got it. He just let everybody know he ain't got even cussed. <laughs> but but they come through here and want to get up and preach with no Holy Ghost. I talked to them about you know receiving the Holy Ghost. Oh no 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 that that was just a gift you know just and you want to preach? Before you know it, they easing out the door. That's all right. Ease on out. You will ease out before you ease up here. Amen. With no Holy Ghost. If that don't block, come to me. I'll open that side when I let you out. Amen. I'll help you get out. That we got one over here. If not, we'll bust a window at the job. We get you out. If you want to leave because you can't preach and you ain't got no Holy Ghost, Elder Murray help you get out. Amen. It'll never happen here. Amen. Do you understand? You you never get up here slipping cuss. <laughs> then everybody looking at Elder Murray. Did he put him up there? It'll never happen, bro. Hear me talking. Let's run fast, man. Luke 24, 49. So what? And behold, I send the promise of my father upon you. I send the promise of my father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem. Wait in the city of Jerusalem. Until you be endued with power from on high. Wait till you get some power. Wait till you get power. Don't just claim power. Wait till you receive power. Amen. Told him to wait in Jerusalem. Let's go to Jerusalem, twin. Give me Acts on 112. Let's go to Jerusalem. He told him to wait in Jerusalem. Now let's go to Jerusalem. Acts 1, 12 said what? Then returned they unto Jerusalem. So they're in Jerusalem now. They done returned to Jerusalem. And from what the, happened? From the mount called Olivet. All right. They done returned. They're in Jerusalem. My God, where Jesus told them to go. Give me verse 14, son. Run fast. Th these all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication. Listen. While in Jerusalem, Jesus told them to tarry. While in Jerusalem, tarry simply means to wait. They're waiting, but while they're waiting, what were they doing, twin? These all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication. They continue with one accord in prayer and supplication. With the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus. With the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus. And with his brother. And with his brethren. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples. What did he say? And said. What? The number of the names together were about 120. Give me around about uh, verse 14, son. Give me verse 14. Give me uh, Acts. Give me Acts 2, verse 1, for the sake of time. Acts 2 and verse 1. What happened, son? And when the now, day remember, told them to go to Jerusalem and tarry and wait. They went there. They're waiting. Acts 1, 14 lets you know they was continuing in prayer while waiting. So while you're tarrying, while you're waiting on that power, on the gift of the Holy Ghost, you must be in prayer. You must continue in prayer. And prayer goes beyond just here in the sanctuary. You at home in prayer. You riding in your car in prayer. Every chance you get, you are in prayer. You're waiting, and while waiting, you are in prayer. Acts two and one, son. What happened? When the day of Pente Pentecost was fully come, what happened, son? They were all with one accord in one place. They was all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven, as of a rushing mighty wind. And what happened to him? And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And what happened? And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like, like as, as a fire. what? Like, like as, as a fire. fire. They were, look, there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a what? Fire. Read it, son. And it sat <laughs> upon each of them. What happened to him? And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. They was filled with the Holy Ghost, with the Holy Spirit, with the Spirit of God, with the Spirit of Christ, with the Spirit of truth. All the same thing. They was all filled with the Holy Ghost. And what happened to him? And began to speak with other tongues. As what? As the Spirit gave them utterance. Y'all, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with receiving the Holy Ghost like that? Do, do anybody see anything wrong with that? No, sir. That's the way they received it in the Bible. That's the way they received it in the Bible. Why would you fight the way they received the Holy Ghost in the Bible? And say you can get it another way. The Bible said, they begin, what happened to him? 
And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And what happened to them? And began to speak with other tongues. As what? As the Spirit gave them utterance. Now, when the people saw what was taking place, spirit and fell upon them. They speaking with other tongues as the spirit gave them utterance. The folks thought them folks are drunk. They said these men are drunk with new wine. Drop down to verse 13, son. Acts chapter 2 and at verse 13. What, what, what are they going to say? What did they say, son? Others mocking said. What did they say? These men are full of new wine. They full of new wine. Read it, twin. But Peter standing up with the eleven. What did he say? Lifted up his voice and said unto them. What did Peter say? Ye men of Judea. And? And all ye that dwell at Jerusalem. What did he say, son? Be this known unto you and hearken to my words. That what? But these are not drunken as ye suppose. These men are not drunken as you suppose. Seeing it is but the third hour of the day. It's too early to be drunk. What did he say? But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. This is the fulfillment of Joel's prophecy. Read it, twin. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God. Saith who? God. That what? I will pour out my spirit upon Hold it a minute. I'm going to pour out what? I will pour out my spirit. Did he say my spirit? My spirit. But they received the gift of what? Holy, Holy Ghost. Ghost. Amen. The Bible said they received the gift of the Holy Ghost. Is Amen. that right? Amen. But the Bible said, this is what he said? I will pour out my spirit. The Holy Ghost? That's God's spirit. Not the third person in the Trinity, the Holy Ghost, that's God's spirit or the spirit of God that gets in man. Read it, twin. I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And what's going to happen? And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. This is the ful ful fulfillment of the prophecy of Joel. Amen. God pouring out his spirit on all flesh and your sons and daughters and prophesy. Amen. It said prophesy to it. It didn't say preach. Don't run with that. Oh, Anna, be ready to write me again. Do you understand? It said prophesy, not preach. Amen. You receive the Holy Ghost, brothers and sisters. This is the way you're going to receive it. Don't let nobody tell you nothing different. You receive the Holy Ghost. This is the way you're going to get it. Brother, this is the only thing I trust. Amen. I don't trust all these men's sayings. Everybody got a doctrine because don't nobody want to wait no more. Amen. Everybody now, my God, man, they got, got with these popcorn salvations. Instant. Throw that thing in the microwave, electrocute it for about two and a half minutes, bag them swell up, ready to eat now. Do you understand? Popcorn salvation. Amen. Everything instant. They come and get on their knees, my God, and pray for about, about, about two minutes. Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Lord. I got it. They ain't got nothing. Amen. And in time, you see they ain't got nothing. Amen. This stuff run its course. Yes, sir. Hear me talking. A couple more, man, and we get out of here. Give me Acts on chapter uh, 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 10. Give me Acts 8 first. Acts 8, start at verse 13, then give me Acts 10, 44. Then Acts 19, 5. We're going to get out of here. I want you to hear me. Give me Acts 8, 13. I want you to watch this, brothers and sisters, because some said, well, I know I'm, been, I'm saved. I got the Holy Ghost because... Um, the love that I show everybody. You know, heard that? Well, you know what? Love is something that's shown over a period of time. Amen. When you receive the Holy Ghost, something happens right then. Do you hear what I say? Look here. Love is something that's shown over a period of time. But when you receive the Holy Ghost, something takes place right then. So something about you takes place. Something changes right then. Right then. Right then and there, right there. Because you, we're finna read now, because somebody's gonna be looking at him. You receive the Holy Ghost, but you're gonna offer money. He's gonna see something taking place. Acts on 8 13, run fast. Then Simon himself believed also. And what happened? And when, we, and when he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wondered, beholding the miracles and signs which were done. Read it, son. Now when the apostles which were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God. They heard that Samaria had received the word of God. They said unto them, Peter and John. What happened, twin? Who, when they would come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Peter and John came down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. For as yet he was fallen upon none of them. Only? Only they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Stop a minute. The doctrine that states once you get baptized, automatically then you got the Holy Ghost. That scripture right there condemned doctrine. Amen. Because they had been baptized, but had not yet received the Holy Ghost. 
your doctrine is dead. These folks been baptized, but have not yet received the Holy Ghost. Your doctrine is dead. Read it, son. Then laid they their hands on them. Read it, son. And they received the Holy Ghost. And then they received the Holy Ghost. And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands, the Holy Ghost was given. The Holy Ghost was given. Did he, did he see something? Amen. He did what, son? And when Simon saw that through laying on of the apostles' hands. Simon saw something taking place. He saw something right then. He saw through and by the laying on of the apostles' hand, the Holy Ghost was given. He offered the money. What did he say, son? Saying, give me also this power that on whomsoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. He was full of the devil. Amen. You understand? Full of the devil. Now, he'd been baptized, but he's still full of the devil. That's letting me know you can get baptized that ain't good enough. You must have water and spirit. You must have both. Give me Acts 10, 44, son, real fast. Let's see what Simon saw. Let's see what he visually saw. Acts 10, son, start at verse 44. What did it say? While Peter yet spake these words. What happened? The Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. These are Gentiles. While Peter was preaching to the Gentiles, the Holy Ghost fell on all them that heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished. Them Jews, my God, man, which believed were astonished. As many as came with Peter. Why? Because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. So... The Jews that came with Peter was astonished because the Gentiles didn't receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Remember, Jesus had told them, don't go by the way of the Gentiles, Amen. but only go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So you got the Jews now astonished that the Lord didn't fill the Gentiles with the Holy Ghost. Read it, son. For they heard them speak with tongues. How, how did they know they had it? For they heard them speak with tongues. Say, is that plain? They heard them speak with tongue and what? And magnify God. And magnify God. Read it, son. Then answered Peter. Then answered Peter. Can any man forbid water? All right. You done got the Holy Ghost, but you have not yet been baptized. How did they know they had the Holy Ghost? They heard them speak with tongue and magnify God. Amen. They heard it. But you got it. And you ain't nobody hurt you. And you ain't even hurt yourself. But you just woke up one morning and decided, I got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Don't gamble with salvation. Don't play with this. You get the Holy Ghost, make sure you can read the way you got it. Now, after these Gentiles received the Holy Ghost, the Jews wanted to jump on Peter. Yes, sir. Because he went unto them that was uncircumcised. They wanted to jump on him. Continue to read, Twain. What you got, son? Can any man forbid water that, that these should not be baptized? Which have? Which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we. And he commanded them? To be baptized in the name of the Lord. Give me Acts 11, 1, son. What did it say? And the apostles and brethren that were in Judea heard that the Gentiles had also received the word of God. They heard that the Gentiles don't see the word of God? And when Peter was come up to Jerusalem. When Peter came to Jerusalem? They that were the circumcision. The Jews, my God, was them that was of the circumcision. What they do? Contended with him. They fight with Peter. They want to jump on Peter because the Lord in the field of Gentiles with the Holy Ghost. They want to jump on Peter because Peter went preaching to him. Amen. Read it, son. Saying. What? Thou went as in to men uncircumcised. You went into them Gentiles, the men that's uncircumcised. And did as eat with them. And you ate with them. But Peter rehearsed the matter from the beginning. Drop down to verse 15, son. Get to the, get, get to the, to, to, to the point. And as I began to speak, the Holy Ghost fell on them. Peter told them, Jews, them, them Jews that's jumping on him, he said, y'all listen now. As I began to speak, as I was talking to them Gentiles, what happened? The Holy Ghost fell on them. The Holy Ghost did what? Fell on them. How? As on us at the beginning. Just like it did on us at the beginning. Acts chapter 2, that was the beginning. What, they, what happened in the beginning? They spake with other tongues. Peter said, it fell, it fell on, you know, as I began to speak, it fell on them just like it did on us at the beginning. So if they got it, just like Peter them got it at the beginning, how are you going to get it differently? How is that? Hmm. How are you going to get it differently? Murray, I got it because I feel good. You better get it just like they got it. 
Acts 19, 1, run fast, twin. While Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, came to Ephesus. He found certain disciples, and he asked them, my God, man, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? What did the book say, twin? And they said unto him. What did they say? We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. Ain't that so? That's the condition of men of the day. We ain't heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. What did he ask, son? And he said unto them. What? Unto what then were you baptized? Read it. And they said unto John's baptism. Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul. What he said? John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance. Say. Saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him. That is on. On Christ Jesus. When they heard this. They were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. What happened twin? And when Paul had laid his hands when upon them. When Paul laid his hands upon them. The Holy Ghost came on them. What came on them? The Holy Ghost. And what is that? And they spake with tongues and prophesied. Why would anybody want to receive it differently? I don't trust it. I don't trust it. Anybody can feel good. Amen. Anybody can feel good. But I'm going to tell you something. A good feeling is not going to stand the test of time. Yeah. The only thing, that's enough twin, the only thing that's going to stand the test of time is you having the real McCoy. The real deal Holy Ghost. You got to have the real deal. Something that'll bridle your tongue where you ain't slipping and cussing. Ready to fist fight. Deacon Hamilton and Deacon Wiley gonna have a fist fight. And both of them, I know I got the Holy Ghost. Really? Folks ought to be ashamed of themselves, man. But you know, you know who I blame mostly? Preachers. Preachers don't mess these folk up, man. Preachers don't mess them up. People say and they, now they got it. They ain't never had an experience with God. Never. Never had no experience. There has been brother. Look, they call my office. They, they call my office. Reginald Young. He called my office. He wanted to discuss with me about speaking with Tom. He told me. I, you know, I've said to him, for what? I believe the Bible. I told him plainly, man, I, I don't have no interest. I, I know what the Church of Christ believes. I have no interest in that stuff. Why would I, look, why would I waste my time arguing with you about whether one going to speak in tongue or not, or not when they receive the Holy Ghost, if that's what I can read? And you just don't want to believe it because your organization, y'all don't believe that. So I'm going to stay on the phone with you going back and forth? No, man. No, it, it's, that's a waste of time. If you had experienced it the way I experienced it, you don't want to contend with me about it. You'll be calling me and say, Mary, you know what? You show right, bro. Man, you see, you say you received it at 19 in Hartsville, South Carolina. Spirit got down and you start speaking the tongue. Mary, I received it at such and such a time. It got, that's what you'll be saying. You'll be calling me and say, no, you ain't got it. You call and talk like that because you never experienced it. Do you understand? Spirit ain't going to fight the spirit. You never experienced this. That's why you're fighting against it. Because you have not had the experience. And I've had this conversation with many brothers. You haven't had the experience. That's why you're fighting against it. Stop fighting and ask the Lord to allow you to experience this thing. And then you'll stop fighting and you'll testify, I got power now. I got power. Acts 1 8, you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. You won't be fighting it. You'll be declaring, oh, I got that power now. I got it. Don't trust nothing else. Thank God for y'all. Continue to keep us in your prayers. You that's around the world, let me say to the, to the writer, I didn't get the rest of your email. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. But we have to go as the Spirit lead. Stay tuned. We'll get the rest of it. Lord willing, we'll be back with you on Wednesday night. Y'all continue to keep us in prayer. You that don't have the Holy Ghost, even here, even here, call on the Lord sincerely. Remember the Bible said, whomsoever shall call. On the name of the Lord shall be saved. Don't be ashamed to call on the Lord. Man, call on the Lord with everything that's within you. When you come up in here, you ain't got to be shy and shame of nothing and nobody. Because everybody in here needs the same thing that you're calling on the Lord for. 
Call on the Lord. Don't be ashamed. Call on him. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. What's his name? His name is Jesus. And call him like you need him. And don't let these modern day Christians tell you it don't take all that. They even got so, so modern and sophisticated now. It don't take, they, they just all proper, man. You, for, you better forget trying to look good. My God, look at it like they say, get ugly if you need to. Call on the Lord. Call on the Lord until he fill you with the Holy Ghost from heaven. From heaven. And when you get it, you're going to get it just like they got it in the book. It ain't going to be nothing different. That's what's going to stand the test of time, not this popcorn stuff. Brothers ain't got no Holy Ghost. That's why they tossed and driven with every wind of doctrine. They're all over the place. One day they believe this. Next day they believe this. Next day they don't know what they believe themselves. One way today, one way tonight. You're another way tomorrow and another way tonight. You're all over the place. You know stability because you don't have the right spirit. Come on up here, camera. My God, man, you better get up here quick. I'm telling you, man. Y'all, keep me in your prayers. Yes. Thank God for you, brother. Yes, God bless you, brother. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You know, brothers and sisters, as I often say, that's some good teaching. That's some good teaching. You know, and I'm going to tell you something about this man here, Kendrick Murray. Because I know something about him. Now, I'm going to tell you something about him. He's a preacher, not a keeper. That's right. That's, That's right. why he's talking to the people about the Holy Ghost. That's right. See? That's right. And this is something that a lot of preachers don't talk to the people about. That's right. Won't That's teach right. about the Holy Ghost. And you know why? Because they don't want the people to receive it. That's right. Because if they receive it, the people sit, listen. Next thing you know, they, they go. Gone. Holy Ghost will let them out. Thank you. Holy Ghost said, uh-uh, that ain't where you need to be. That's right. And then that preacher will try to convince them, this is where the Lord wants you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like if he gave the Holy Ghost. That's right. That's See? right. That's right. That's the reason why I say of a truth. A lot of preachers won't preach what this man is preaching. See? He's preaching about receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. Because that a bad witness, the spirit of bad witness of what he's talking about. It's the word, brother. See, it's the word of That's God. Right. That's right. Even in the natural. Mm -hmm. See, the Holy Ghost will keep you. Mm -hmm. See, the Holy Ghost will keep you. This man can't walk around with the people 24-7. Can't do it. Can't do preaching it. Preaching God's word. No, sir. So after the people leave here and wherever else. That's right. That's right. They need a keeper. Something on the inside, brother. He's a preacher, not a keeper. That's right. They need That's something right. on the inside. That's right, brother. Even in the natural. Mm -hmm. We all got a keeper at home. Mm -hmm. Some may say, where's that? What, what, what you mean? A keeper at home. It's in your kitchen. Mm -hmm. And so I'm still wondering. Mm -hmm. What's in that kitchen? That your ice box. <laughs> Don't it keep your food? Uh -huh. It's nothing but a keeper. I don't care how good it look. I don't care how old it is. It's a keeper. That's right. It's keeping your food. Why? Because your food can't keep itself. That's what the Holy Ghost does it for is, us. It, it keeps, keeps us. That's right, brother. Because we cannot keep ourselves. That's right, brother. That's right. We ask that everyone right. will stand. That's right, we'll brother. be dismissed with a prayer. <laughs> well, prayer tomorrow. Seven, seven o'clock tomorrow. Prayer. Amen. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come in the name of Jesus Christ. Thanking you for your eternal word, Lord. Asking you, Lord Jesus, to strengthen the preacher. Help us, Lord Jesus. My God, I ask you to continue to put your hand upon him. Continue to open up his understanding even the more. Help us, Lord That he Jesus. may help you. Your people. Lord. Help us, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we come asking you, Lord Jesus, let this telecast go all over the world and yes, help those Lord that Jesus. are in bondage. Help us, Lord Jesus. Help those that are in places, Lord Jesus, in capture That's right. by men. That's right, Lord. Lord, we ask, Lord Jesus, that my God, your word go out and open up the understanding of your people that they may be saved. Help us, Lord in Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord Jesus. My God, we ask you to bless those that are here. 
Bless those that are far. Bless those that are near. My God, we ask you to open up the understanding, Lord Jesus, that your people, my God, will understand the scriptures and understand the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus Christ. These blessings and all we ask in your name, and we say amen. 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 God bless you, brother. brother. Man, you put it out. Thank God for you, brother. Yes, Thank God for you, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir.